Okay. Uh, good morning, class. This is the next section, six two, dealing with torques and decay. So we've been talking about differential equations, and the ones that we have solved for as of right now have all been in terms of x. And I want to show you a quick little example of the work that you did in the previous section, where you had a differential equation, and you were able to solve this because you only had x's here. And we have not discussed problems like, again, from the previous section, where you had x and y's together. So this is a type of differential equation that we're going to be solving today. And to do that, we talk about this term called separation of variables. And like it says, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to separate the variables, get the x on one side and the y's on the other. So given this differential equation, derivative, 2x over y, we're going to start by, oh, I forgot, we like Leibniz notation. And Leibniz notation is dy dx. Remember, that's the same as derivative, so that's, the, that's y prime. Now we are writing it in this notation to make the separation a little clearer. So the goal is to bring all the x's on the right, all the y's on the left. And I always start with that dx. It is not a fraction, but we think about it as a fraction where we're going to multiply by a dx. So that I'll be able to integrate on this side with the dx. Now the y here, I want to move it to the left. So. I can multiply by y. And separation of variables is when you have y dy equal 2x dx. x is on one side, y is on the other. We're able to separate the variables. Now, with the separation of variables, then I'm able to integrate, and I integrate both sides of my equation. I will zoom in a little bit. And when I integrate here y dy, I get 1 half y squared, it is a power rule, add and divide, equal another power rule, add and divide, which is simply x squared. Now, I know I'm forgetting something, and I'm forgetting something on purpose, and I wish I was in class so I could pick on people, but I'm not, so I hope you realize that whenever you integrate, you must introduce a constant of integration. As a matter of fact, I integrated on this side as well. And when I integrate on this side, I'm actually going to introduce a constant over here as well. Now, we don't write this constant on the left because I'm going to ask you to move it to the right. And if, and if I subtract this constant to the other side, well, what happens is that I have a constant minus a constant, and a constant minus a constant is some other constant. I'm writing plus constant. I don't know what the constant is. These do not cancel. But I want to see, I want to make sure that you see that technically we have two constants. But because we're always going to move this one to the right, we kind of not even worry about that one. And there's my integration. So I'm going to move a little bit to the side. There's a couple more things I want to talk about on this problem. This is what is referred to as a general solution. And we call that a general solution because I don't know what that constant is. There's a way to find that constant. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. Now, how we solve or how we leave this uh, general solution, it's depending on the book. I will tell you that most of the time they clear the fraction. So multiply everything by 2. And that's what I'm doing. I am multiplying everything by 2. And I'm multiplying everything by 2. And that is the general solution. I guess I could take the square root to solve for the y, but I'll leave it like that. 
So the differential equation that has both x's and y's, we need to separate the variables and then integrate both sides. Okay. Next thing, growth and decay models. As I read this, the rate of change of a variable y, that first part of the sentence tells me a rate, which means derivative. That tells me this, that I have a derivative of y with respect to t, time by the way, is, is an equal sign, proportional to the value y. Proportional introduces a constant. In this case, we're going to use k. That constant is, is called the constant of integration. We're going to talk about how to find that k and what that k means to the value of y. So you'll be given this sentence most of the time, and we're able to write this differential equation. Now, because it is a differential equation, you can solve that differential equation. We could ask you to separate variables and integrate both sides and solve for the y and blah, blah, blah. But this differential equation will have this as a solution. Every differential equation in that form will have the solution in that form. y equal c e to the kt. And this solution, well, there's a lot of things happening there. The c value is the initial amount of whatever stuff we're talking about. We're going to do some word problem and talk about what that means. And then whenever you hear initial amount, oops, initial amount of the y, whatever that y is, I want to remind you that whenever you hear the word initial, we're talking about time equals zero. The k, well, first the t. The t is time. The k is the important part here. The k is a constant. And knowing that it's a constant, if I'm able to find the k value, and the k value is some positive number, that tells me that this, this, is dealing with exponential growth. If the k value is some negative, then we're dealing with exponential decay. So the k value will tell us if something is growing or decaying. When the k is positive, we're talking growth. When the k is negative, we're talking decay. Okay, I'm um, gonna move on. Example, the rate of change of y is proportional to y. Again, as soon as I read that first part, I know that the differential equation is k times some value y. The rate of change of y is proportional, the constant, to y. And they gave me other information here. When t is 0, y is 2. When t is 2, y is 4. What is the value of y when t is 3? So we'll deal with that right now. But if I know this, well, I'm not going to ask you to separate variables and integrate. I already know what the solution will look like. The solution will have the form of y equal c e to the kt. I know that's the solution of that differential equation. And knowing that that is the solution, 
we're going to ask you to find C and find the K. And to find the C, to find the K, that's where all this other information comes in. So I am given that T is 0 when Y is 2. That is an ordered pair. And when I write the ordered pair, I'm talking T comma Y. Time is 0. The value is 2. I also know another ordered pair. When time is 2, the Y value is 4. And they're asking me to find, let me write down here the, what we're looking for. Find the value of y when t is equal to 3. When t is equal to 3, we need to figure out that y value. And in order to find that y value, well, we'll talk about finding the c and the k. So I'm going to use these ordered pairs to find the C and the K. Start off with that one. Y equal C E to the K T. So I know that the Y value is two and the T value is zero. T value is zero. Now doing some algebra, K times zero is zero. E to the zero is one. I know C is 2. So once I know the C is 2, let me jump over to my next ordered pair. And I'm going to use that C value and this. Remember, this is T comma Y. And now I'll be able to find the K. So I start off with Y equal the C value. Oops, what is my Y? I already know my Y value is 4. Let me change that to 4. C E to the K times T. So again, the Y that was there, that's the C value I found. That's the T value that was given. I'm looking for the K. So to solve this, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Some algebra. Whenever I have a power, an exponential equation, there's the e. And I want to solve for that k up there. I will take the natural log of both sides. And I'm taking the natural log of both sides because here, natural log of e to the 2k will give me 2k. Here, I have a natural log of 2. Well, I'll deal with that in a bit. I do need to finish solving that, so I'm going to divide by 2, and I will get the k value. Now, at this point, you're going to take out your handy-dandy calculator or your phone, I know. So I have the natural log of 2, and I have to divide that by 2. I'm getting my constant to be... 0 0.34657 blah 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 it is a positive value uh, which tells me this situation is growing is uh, exponential growth now i'm going to need that constant that k value so before i go to my paper i'm going to ask you to store it and you can put it anywhere you want but i'm going to put it in k because that's k so there it is i stored it so on my paper, I will write the decimal approximation, but I do have it saved in my calculator. So now, I have found the C, I found the K, I can write the equation or the solution is going to look like this. Y equal, that was the C value, remember we found the C, E to the K value. times t. Now, we usually ask you to write this solution. The decimal, go 3, go 4, that's fine. But 
we really are asking you to find the y value. And to find the y value, I'm going to substitute in the 3 for the t. So I'm just going to plug in a 3 right there. And you know what? I have it in my calculator, so it's going to be 3 times my k value. And when I use my calculator, let me set this up here. I'm going to approximate. Two e to the three k. All, all calculated here. I'm getting my y value to be five point six five seven. Remember, three places, no more, no less. Three. All right. Well, there it is. So next one. Let's get into a little bit of a word problem here. Suppose that 10 grams of plutonium isotope was released in the Chernobyl nuclear accident. How long will it take for the 10 grams to decay to 1 gram? And by the way, the half-life is 24,100 years. All right, some chemistry here, but let's see what we can do. I'm going to start with some ordered pairs. Let me read it again and figure out some information that was given. How long will it take for 10 grams to decay to one gram? So at the beginning, time, at the beginning with time equals zero, there were 10 grams. I'll use one to keep the same form. So at the very beginning, there were 10 grams. More information. I know that the half-life is 24,100. Again, time and y. I know that if I wait 24,100 years, that the y value will be half of that. So from 10 grams, this will drop down to 5 grams. Let's read it again. Make sure you agree. At the beginning, I start off with 10 grams. If I wait that long, that 10 will be dropped to 5 and half. That's what the half life is. So when we read these problems, we need to be able to generate some ordered pairs. T comma Y, T comma Y. And now, let's figure out what we're actually going to ask you to find. How long will it take for the 10 grams to decay to 1? So, in this problem, we're looking for the time. How long is it going to drop down to 1 gram? So, pause the video, read it again, make sure you agree with the ordered pairs. And I'm going to drop this parent, this comma there so it won't look like there's three things happening. There. Okay. Now, the solution will always be in the form y equals c to the kt. Find the c, find the k, write the solution, and then plug in whatever we're asking to plug in. Again, I recommend pausing the video, doing a little bit of work, and then push play. So let's continue then. With the first piece of information, I note that the y value is 10 when the t is 0. k times 0 is 0, e to the 0 is a 1. I'm getting the c value to be 10. Now, I did the same thing on the example right above. Eventually, I won't be doing this. Eventually, I'm going to point out the fact that this is time equals zero. Well, you can't see the highlighter, can you? When time equals zero, that's the value you're going to get, 10. That's the value you're going to get, 10. 
because the initial amount, time is zero. Continue. The next piece of information, the y is equal to the c value e to the k value times the 24,100. We can solve that for the k. Divide by 10. I will need to take the natural log of both sides. I will need to divide by 24,100. Again, I'm dividing by 24,100. Calculator time. So I have the natural log of one half. And I have to divide that by, which means that the K value is negative 2.8. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Remember what that is? That's some scientific notation stuff from a long time ago. That means I'm going to get that decimal point and I want to move it five times in the negative direction. So let me kind of move some space here. So I'm going to get that decimal and I'm going to go this way. One, two, three, four, five, somewhere over here. And as I get negative zero point, I got to make sure I count my zeros here. I don't know that I get them correct here. I think I missed a zero, didn't I? All right, let me squeeze in another zero here. Now, that decimal I will need. I'm going to ask you to store that decimal again in K. And I'm putting it in K because that's the K value. You can put it anywhere you want to keep track of it. All right. Moving on. Now, I found the K and the C. Let me make sure I write down my equation here. Y equals C, E. Well, I don't want to write that decimal, so I'll write KT. Remember, I have that stored in my calculator. To solve for the T, I know the Y value is a 1. Some algebra here. I have to divide by 10. I'm taking the natural log of both sides. That would bring that KT down. And I have to divide by KT. So eventually my T will end up being the natural log of 1 over 10. And I have to divide that by my K value. Remember that is stored in my calculator. So pop that into your calculator and we'll find out that those 10 grams, natural log of one tenth, divide that by my K value. That'll take those 10 grams to drop down to one gram. It'll take 80,000 and we'll go 59 years. That's how long it's going to take for, for that 10 grams to drop down to 1 gram. Okay. I'm going to move on. We have a couple more examples to do, and I'll probably do one more. And we'll go example number four. So, again, pause, read it. Can you figure out some ordered pairs? And then we can start finding the C and the K in class. I will usually give you a couple of minutes for you to practice or try this problem on your own. So pause, try it, and then we'll see what you got. So let me read this again. I have some given. There were 100 flies at the beginning. 
So at the very, very beginning, there were 100 flies. And then there were 300 after the fourth day times four, there were 300. After how many days, well, I guess this is what we're looking for. We're looking for the time that is gonna take for there to be 1,000 flies. At the beginning, there were 100. After four days, there were 300. Find the time that it will get to a thousand. I am not going to solve this. If I know time is zero, the C is 100. You can look at what you did in the previous two examples. That one. Y equal to the C value E to the k times 4 times time. I'm getting my k value. Oh, again, this is what um, I'm missing from being in class. I, I wanted to ask at the beginning, was this K value going to be a positive or a negative? And, and I didn't have that opportunity, but you can see the number of flies went from 100 to 300. We're looking for 1,000. The number of flies is going up. And if I know ahead of time that the number of flies are going up, I should be getting a positive value for my k. And that's one way we can see if we're doing this correctly. The k value should be positive and, and that's what we got. So again, I'm gonna store this in my k. And then I move on. Y equal to the C value KT. I am not writing that decimal there, but there should be a decimal there. Plug in a thousand for your Y. Doing some, some algebra, divide by a hundred. Natural log, divide by K. And natural log divided by the k value and the t, it'll take, it'll take 8.384, but again, please make sure that you verify that yourself, and that's what I'm getting. Okay. Um, Next one, I, I know this video is getting a little bit long, but let's see if we can knock this out quick here. Four months after advertising, a manufacturer notices that the sales have dropped, hmm, that's a hint, from 100,000 units per month to 80,000 units. If the sales follow an exponential pattern, what would they be after two months? So again, pause, try it out, and I'll come back and give you the answer. Given, um, because it went from 100,000 to 80,000, at the beginning, there were 100,000 units per month. At the beginning, there was that much. And it dropped from that much to 80,000. Now, the time here, let me read it again. It went from, oh, how long did it drop? 
four months. I missed that at the beginning. It took that long to drop to 80,000. How long would it take to go to, well, let me go over here. What we're asking you to find is that after two, another two months. So this is not two. We're gonna go another two. From here, we're gonna go another two. That should be six. Read it carefully. What would it be after another two months? So from those four months, moving on to six, right? I want you to try it yourself. I will give you the answer that this Y should actually be 71,554 units. I'm not gonna show you my work. That should be the answer. If you got stuck, let me know and I'll work them out for you. All right, so homework again. Page 420. 3 to 11 odd. 21 to 25 odd. 29, 37 odd. And then some, some here a little bit. Some interesting ones down here, 51, 53, 57. If you have any questions, let me know. And I hope to speak to you tomorrow or later today.